its other unit. If you divide kilogram, a uh, Newton by kilogram, what do you get? The Newton is itself a what? A kilogram times a meter per second squared, right? If you divide that by kilogram, you get meter per second squared. So the gravitational field is a measure of how much a certain mass distorts, distorts the space around it. You see, which is the same as the measure of the how fast the object accelerates. So the gravitational field is the same as the measure of acceleration, meter per second squared. So at the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field is equal to what? 9.8 meters per second squared. You see, but that's not the way we teach it to regular physics students. When a person is taking physics for the first time, we don't want to scare them. So we say the, the rate of acceleration at the surface of the Earth is 9.8. We don't say the gravitational field at the surface of the Earth is 9.8, because it's a little bit harder concept to grasp. But it's the, the, two, the two things are the same thing, you see? And as you go away from the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field drops. Therefore, the acceleration due to gravity drops, you see? So how did uh, Einstein explain this? You use the general theory of relativity, right? You say the mass placed in space distorts the space around it due to a four-dimensional uh, tensor. And he, you explained his, uh, uh, he used his gravitational wave equation, uh, <clears throat> gravitational equation to explain this. The easiest way to, ex to uh, picture a field is to envision a, a, a huge blanket. Imagine a blanket like this. And when you place uh, an object on that blanket, what happens? Just imagine us like, imagine this room, all of us holding a big sheet, a big sheet. And then, you know, one of us is here, one of us is here, one of us is at that corner. Every, all of us are standing around. And then one of the students here goes and puts a, an object at the center of that blanket, what happens? The object goes down. So you see the gravitational field is a measure of the distortion of that. Well, the electric field would be that too. If a person went and put a little negative charge on that blanket, the negative charge would create the electric field that's going towards it, right? The positive charge would create a uh, the blanket would go like this, the opposite. The gravitational counterpart of that doesn't exist. You can't take an object, put it on the blanket, and the blanket go up. Do you see what I'm saying? So there is no such object which is the equivalent of placing a positive charge on the blanket. Because uh, gravity always attracts, you see? So gravity is equivalent to like the negative charge, placing a negative charge, okay? Then if you place other objects there, if you place multiple objects, what will be the gravitational field? Well, it's kind of a measure of how that blanket will distort, right? In some places, it's going to be look weird. In some places, it's going to be different. Same thing. If you place a bunch of positive charges, like let's say you place a, a negative charge and a positive charge. And a lot of times, you'll see the problem will say, draw the E-field distribution of this. The way you can visualize this is a blanket. Put a positive charge on this blanket. It goes up a certain height and then place a negative charge here, it goes down a certain height, the blanket. You see? So it's like a mountain and then a valley, okay? So now if I place a positive charge, another third positive charge there, what's going to happen to that third positive charge? Okay? Right? So the first positive charge creates a big mountain peak, right? If I place a third charge, it goes Right? How about if I place a negative charge right there? 
negative charges like to go up the valley, right? So the negative charge will go towards the positive. How about if I place a neg uh, negative here, down here? The negative likes to go up the blanket and then up the top to the other positive charge, right? So when we're drawing E field here on the board, we're drawing only two-dimensional two dimensional pictures because it's too hard to draw a three-dimensional. It would be nice if we could do three-dimensional, you know. But we're drawing a flat version of that. We're saying the E field distribution of a dipole, this is called a dipole, the E field goes from a positive and goes towards the negative. And by drawing the E field distribution, you're in a sense, what you're saying is, if you put another little positive charge here, that positive charge is going to go in the direction of the E field lines. It's going to go towards the, and then it's going to crash into the negative, which is like saying the positive charge likes to go from a higher hill down to the lower valley, you see? So uh, it goes this way, then it goes this way. So if you put a positive charge here, it goes this way and crashes into the negative. And opposite, if you put a negative charge here, it goes and hits the positive. You see? The negative gets attracted to the positive. So when you draw E field distributions, here are some of the rules you got to follow. If the charges are the same, all the lines going out of the positive should go into the negative. Okay. So the, line, the number of lines coming out of the positive should be the same as the negative. So uh, here's the first rule. So number of lines going out of <coughs> or into a charge is proportional to the magnitude of the charge. Right? Because the number of lines, the number of line distribution is showing you the strength of that charge. So if I decide, like in this case, I decided to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 charges, 10 lines coming out of the positive, the negative should have 10 going into it, right? The second rule is the lines should be symmetric. <clears throat> In other words, Notice here how I did it symmetric. I did one, two, three, and then down here I did one, two, three. If I don't do down here three and I just do it up there, if I only do three up there, in other words, let's say I do like this. Let's say I do like this. This one obeys rule one but doesn't obey rule two, it would be counted wrong on a test, okay? Because you're saying that the field strength here is stronger than here. Here the field strength is weaker. There's only one line coming, which means that you're saying somehow if you put a, a plus charge, it, it gets attract. If you put a negative charge, it gets attracted to this region more than this region. Somehow this region is weaker, so it shouldn't be. Okay, here's another. You could here's another way it could be uh, uh, wrong. Uh, let's say something like this. <clears throat> 